So today I want to show you a drawing of the view from my old apartment. By the time of recording this video, I have already moved out for several months already. <laughs> but、uh, I feel compelled to make this video and create something to remember this place by and to say goodbye. To explain what's special about this place, I need to simply show you this view. I mean, just freaking look at it. That is Mission Peak. That is San Francisco. That's the Pacific Ocean. That is a coyote warning sign. Legend has it that these hills are homes to free-roaming coyotes, though I have only heard their howling at night. So、um, this apartment is on the top of a hill in Daly City, south to San Francisco. In the past two years, I was lucky enough to set this as the backdrop of my desk and, by proxy, my life. It has been a real treat. As per usual, I am drawing in Blender with geometry notes. If those words don't mean anything to you, just take it as an excuse for why the drawing won't look like anything until the very end. But I promise you, we will get there. <laughs> I started by generating these little houses on the hill, which for me is the defining feature of Daly City. I built a node that takes any two curves and fills the space in between with smaller curves. This way, I can simply draw the top and bottom lines for the hills, and then get a bunch of baselines to generate my houses and trees on top. Like most things in Blender, my houses and trees start off as cubes, but、uh, that's okay, cause the goal at this stage is to find an algorithm to generate the layout so that it looks dynamic and interesting and has good rhythm. Now comes this interesting question. How much randomness should we give to these little houses? Meaning, how much should they vary in sizes and styles? What will really capture the essence of Daily City? Well, apparently there is not supposed to be a whole lot. As Mamvina Reynolds once wrote in a song called "Little Boxes," little boxes on the hillside, little boxes made of tiki taki, little boxes on the hillside, little boxes all the same. While you gotta appreciate the clever satire and the general truth in the lyrics, I decided to、um, give it my own spin and just tone up the randomness by a notch. Because、um, hey, I'm a 3D artist. I can make shit up. I just really enjoy fantasizing about the diverse human experience that could happen underneath those roofs. I think they bring about a certain chaotic quality that almost alters the landscape. So. I、um, added in nonsense buildings with nonsense windows. I added streets and pavements that are just sort of floating in the air. I mean, they don't make much structural sense, but we're also not applying for a construction permit here. <laughs>、uh, I'm really just trying to capture the familiar impression that is the Daly City, San Francisco residential area. Now, the other distinctive feature to know about Daly City is the fog. Carl the Fog, the well-known yet mysterious San Francisco resident who also frequents Daly City. The Fog, who, according to their Instagram account, would protect you from the dreary sun for an entire month when foggiest comes around. Let me tell you a little story about our personal encounter with Carl. So, on the day of touring the apartment, we completely missed Carl. It was a very boring, plain, lame, sunny day. <laughs> Being the vanilla, inexperienced Bay Area resident that I was, I thought maybe this is just how things always are like. Then, on the day of moving in, we were greeted by fog that was so thick. It felt impossible to see past 50 meters. It literally felt like we were in Silent Hills. Carl frequently got me thinking, "Oh my gosh, this is not the sunny California weather that I was promised. I am so moving out next year." But every once in a while, when there's just the right amount of fog and when the sun hits the horizon at just the right angle, the whole city starts to glitter and shine, and that makes all the suffering worth it. <laughs> So to capture Carl, I started by using volumes. This was the first time I tried to use volumes. I struggled a lot, and so did my laptop. But I had to do it. I had to capture the soul of Daily City. Since my cities look more stylized than realistic, I wanted my fog to match the level of stylization. 
So I went for generating the archetypal cloud shape by subdividing a bunch of curves and bending their bezier handles upwards. Then I turned them into mesh, extruded them, layered them together so that they create this sense of depth. To make things look more organic, I used this old trick of introducing noise either directly on the mesh itself or on the volume displacement afterwards. And after quite a bit of tweaking, I was quite happy with how it looked visually. But when I hit the render button, I saw a render time of over 24 hours, and that is just for one single frame. It would have been fine if I had an entire render farm, but sadly I do not. I only have one laptop to slave around. We'll have to do something cheaper. <laughs> I uh, reluctantly moved on and started experimenting with drawing the clouds as sprites. I took inspiration from clouds in traditional Japanese landscape paintings like these. These clouds are absolutely gorgeous and quite luxuriously made too, because they're actually golden leaves painstakingly applied by hands. Fortunately, as 3D artists, we don't actually have to use gold. I just made this gold flake texture and apply it to my sprites so that when I overlap them together, they create this foggy, misty effect that I really enjoy. They're super stylish. The best part is they are a lot lighter way to animate and render as well. Okay, with the main elements in the scene set up, we're now ready to test out the real power of the node system, which is to draw very few lines, freely define and tweak the overall layout, and get rich details instantly. As you can see here, I'm really just drawing the very rough shape of where I want my cities to be, and then I can quickly do a test render, check out the results, see if I like it, go back, change stuff up, test render again, rinse and repeat. You might look at this and go, hey, yeah, why does it look so different now? <laughs> well, I actually decided to change to a nice scene and generate many small light sources. I just really like the aesthetic and scatter light sources while definitely adding to the render time can look really nice with cycles. So um, after a lot of tweaking on the material, the animation, and the composition, the scene is ready for rendering. Let's go for a walk while we wait for the render to finish. Alright, that was a bit of a lie. I actually drove 40 minutes to come back here because um, I just wanted to indulge myself in a moment of nostalgia. I mean, just look at it. <laughs> this never gets old. It's good to be back. It's really good to be back. When I lived here, I felt a very strange sense of detachment, loneliness, and peace. It was very different from the lifestyle that I was used to. When I moved here during the pandemic, it was the perfect haven to hide away from all the craziness of the world. But when the world was coming back to life, I felt as if I was participating in it from afar, only observing from a distance and dipping in and out as I pleased. The younger me would probably have felt anxiety around not having a more active social life. But now I am completely fine with it, because I guess all I wanted to do is to be glued to a computer and fiddle in Blender and create things anyway. <laughs> I guess I'm saying that I'm at peace with what I prefer and the lifestyle that I chose. I'm moving to try a different lifestyle, but uh, this, this has been lovely. I am very, very grateful to have been able to live here. Okay, why don't we pretend that the render has finished? It definitely has not. Uh, and come back to the final result. Say goodbye, dear apartment. It has been a good time, truly. I'll miss you. <laughs>